Hey, what's going on, Bully Fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls himself, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. Hey, what's going on, guys? Today, we're going to be talking about how to collect blood from your dogs. So there's numerous reasons as to why you'd want to know how to collect blood from your dog. I mean, um, being as a breeder, this is super, super, super essential and key as far as doing your own progesterones to be able to know, you know, if the dog is ready to be bred or not. Um, doing relaxing tests so that you know if the dog is confirmed for pregnancy or not. And the list goes on as far as all the other reasons why you'd want to know how to be able to collect blood from your dogs. A lot of times I'll even just collect the blood from my dogs and drop the sample off at the vet for any tests that I may not be able to do at home or anything like that. So that it saves, you know, the stress and, uh, you know, the potential of getting my dog sick by bringing them to the vet and being around other sick dogs. But the main reason as to why most breeders would want to know, you know, how to collect blood from their dogs is mostly for progesterones so that, you know, you can time your breedings correctly um, and make sure you're, you know, you're breeding the females at the optimal time. So I'm going to show you guys the things that you need in order to collect the blood. I'm going to show you guys how we collect the blood. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you guys how to be able to ship it up and package it in case you need to send it out to a lab or to your vet. So let's get started. So before we get started, let's take a look at a few of the things that we're going to need to be able to collect the blood. So the first thing is what container you're going to put it in after you drew the blood. If we're shipping it out, we'll use the red top tube and put more blood in it to send out. If we're doing a test at home, we'll put it in a small mini centrifuge tube and spin it down and do the test ourselves. It all comes down to how much blood you have to collect and what you have available to you at the time. Next, we have a latex tourniquet. And basically you would use this to wrap around the dog's arm um, so that it basically applies pressure so you can find the vein much easier. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do it without it just in case you don't have one of these. Next, you're gonna wanna have some tape and some gauze to be able to wrap around where you drew the blood and preferably some scissors so that you can go ahead and cut the tape once you're done wrapping it. Also, you're gonna wanna have some type of disinfectant maybe some alcohol prep pads or whatever type of wound spray that you have for after you drew the blood. And lastly, the syringe. We use a 22 gauge one inch syringe. Now, the higher the number, actually the smaller the syringe gets and the lower the number, the bigger the syringe gets. So we found that this is the perfect size for us because if you go too high in the number, what winds up happening is the blood is too thick and then you can't get the blood into the syringe. So be mindful of that when you're shopping for your syringes. So where I mostly draw blood from is the cephalic vein in their forearm. Since I'm gonna be showing you guys without a latex tourniquet, what I just do is apply pressure with my hand on the forearm so that now the vein starts to raise. If you have a hard time spotting the vein, what you can do is you can use some disinfectant or some water and spray the area so the vein will be more visible. And two things you can't really see that I always do before I use a syringe is I make sure that the top is always tight so that the needle doesn't come off and become loose while I'm drawing blood as well as I make sure that I pull back the plunger a little bit to make sure that the plunger isn't stuck from the factory. So before we start collecting, you're gonna just make sure that the hole on the needle is facing up. They call that the bubble. Always make sure that's facing up and then you can go ahead and get started on drawing your blood. So as you can see, I use my index finger to give me space between the syringe and the dog's forearm so I'm not going too deep. I use my middle finger and my thumb to hold the groove in the back of the syringe. And then I use my ring finger to pull back and that's what's pushing the plunger back and drawing the blood out. So then what I'll do is I'll quickly apply pressure on the site so that then it doesn't clot. What I'll then do is put the cap on the syringe and put that on the side, grab her forearm, go ahead and spray the area with some disinfectant and then go ahead and put the cotton ball now and tape it up to apply some pressure. And then lastly, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get those scissors, cut the tape and then you're done. All right, guys, so now that we have our blood sample, you know, um, I drew about a cc and a half. It all depends on the test that you're doing and, you know, what you need it for. I typically like to have at least a minimum is a cc of blood. So now we have our different tubes here. I'm going to be shipping this blood out. So actually, um, I'm going to be putting it in a red top tube like this. Um, if I was spinning it down doing, say, a relaxing or a progesterone test, I'd put it in my own little mini centrifuge tube like this, spin it down and do the test here at home. So now as an added bonus, I'm going to show you guys what we do to have our samples ready and to be able to ship them out. So what you're going to need is a plastic bag like this and some paper towel. So what we do is go ahead, rip off some of the paper towel. And now um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and wrap the centrifuge tube in the paper towel you know, to prevent it from breakage and things like that. So now once you have the tube wrapped in your paper towel, you know, to prevent it from breakage and things like that, you're gonna go ahead and slip it in a plastic bag like this. 
Gonna go ahead, you know, get the air out of there, roll it up like this. And now go ahead and close it up. So once you have your sample, you know, sealed and ready to go, you're gonna need something like this. Some type of mini cooler, you know, disposable that you could go ahead and, um, you know, put your sample in and send it out. You don't need something this big. Um, this is just what I have right now for the video, but basically they come in styrofoam, they come in like egg crate, and all it is is a little cooler that we can go ahead and put our samples in when we need to ship out blood. Um, you can actually use this for semen and all other kinds of things when you're you know, dealing with repro type stuff for dogs. So let me show you how we pack ours up. What we're gonna go ahead and do is take a few of our ice packs, and put them in. This. Then what we'll do is we'll take some kind of paper like this and put our sample in the bag here. Two more ice packs on top. Close the lid. And now we'll go ahead and tape this up put it in another box and be able to ship it out. And as I've said, this is gonna be super essential as far as being able to do your own progesterones. So um, if you guys don't have a vet local to you that does progesterones, or if the vet that's local to you is very expensive in doing progesterones, now you guys can actually draw the blood um, pull it yourself and be able to ship it. And if you guys don't have anyone local or it's too expensive, you guys can ship it to us and we'll do the progesterone for you guys and send you guys a number. All you have to do now is just draw the blood and send it to us. So you guys can DM us or send us a message, um, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, and uh, we'll get in contact with you guys if you guys wanna be able to send us your blood samples and be able to do progesterone for you guys. And drawing the blood yourself will save you a ton of money, especially with the progesterone. Then we have the expensive machine. We'll do the progesterone for you guys. All you guys gotta do is just send us the blood. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much how to be able to collect and draw blood from your dogs and being able to package it up and ship it out. And see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks.